This is Witchbase News for Friday the 26th of August 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...the Thargoids up their aggression levels away from HIP 22460 and everyone is now a target Frontier speaks again about the future of Elite Dangerous and Update 14 and there's a predicted planetary collision inside the bubble this week and more. You know what to do by now ...like and subscribe remembering to click the little bell icon and select all notifications to stay informed with our future videos and to directly support the work of this channel you'll find our Patreon linked below. We reported last week that an FAQ was expected from Frontier to clarify issues around the move to Codebase 4.0 and in particular what it would mean for player instancing and cross platform systems like the BGS and Galnet. That expected fact did arrive this week and as you'd expect it contains some clear and unequivocal answers. I've linked to the short fact below but the even shorter version is as follows. Odyssey instances with Odyssey only ...Horizons 4.0 instances with Horizons 4.0 only ...and Horizons 3.8 instances with Horizons 3.8 only. New features and content will make it to products using the 4.0 codebase only ...access to the 3.8 codebase which isn't being updated anymore will not be removed. The BGS will still cross between versions as is the case now Galnet and Community Goals will still cross between versions as is the case now. 4.0 may receive exclusive Community Goals and articles which involve on foot content. In related news Explorer and YouTuber Commander Exorcist has produced an excellent video guide explaining exactly how the option to copy your commander save from console to PC will work given what we know currently. Succinctly explaining what the account copy does and doesn't include and how as a console player you can best prepare your current commander for the process when it arrives and there are very much some sensible steps you can take to prepare for the move so do check out the video if you're considering taking up the offer. Frontier are saying that the ETA for the account copy option is still slated for September at this point. As always as soon as we know anything more specific we'll let you know on this very channel. Commander LCU no full like one of Canon Research has highlighted what appears to be an impending planetary collision inside the bubble. More so if things proceed as Canon's forecast predicts the collision will happen between two bodies that are each home to an Odyssey surface settlement. Planetary collisions within Elite Dangerous are not a super rare phenomena being the result of limitations in the stellar forge system that generates the galaxy and they don't result in the kind of cataclysmic pyrotechnics that would be expected should such a thing happen in the real galaxy. They are however still quite a sight to behold nonetheless as the two planetary bodies slide gracefully through each other. The resultant lack of cataclysmic explosion also affords commanders a safe opportunity to witness the event quite literally from ground zero and speaking from personal experience I can recommend adding such a collision to your Elite Dangerous bucket list. We even made a video about one such event that we attended a few years ago which you'll find linked on screen now. With all that said the collisions rarely happen in the bubble and this is the first instance that we're aware of at least where such a thing has occurred on an inhabited world. What the relative orbital alignments of the planets will be at the crunch point will determine if the settlements concerned and their associated NPCs and landing pads etc are even on the right side of the planet when the collision occurs and that is still very much an unknown but it'll certainly be fun finding out. The system concerned is Rhinardi and its planets 8b and 8c that are due to share around a 15% overlap with each other. A glancing hit but a hit nonetheless. If Canon's slide rule is working as expected the collision should take place around 2108 UTC on the 31st of August. You'll find all these details in the description below this video. 
We reported during the week that the gaming website Rock Paper Shotgun had published an interview with Elite's senior producer Samantha Marsh and lead game designer Luke Betterton. You'll find that video linked on screen now if you've not yet seen it. At the time we reported that the interview was interesting not just for the content but also by the mere fact of its existence and it seems today that the chat with RPS was not exclusive. Two new web interview articles passed across our desks as we were putting this video together, one with PC Gamer Magazine and one with PCGN. The PC Gamer article is somewhat inaccurate with its depiction of the events surrounding the Proteus wave claiming that the Thargoids destroyed the Proteus device after its initial burst. They of course didn't. Whilst we're still foggy on the specifics of exactly what happened with the Proteus event we do know that in fact a second wave was fired from the Proteus weapon and with that burst the disabled Thargoids revived somehow and destroyed the orbiting Bright Sentinel megaship. The Proteus weapon on the planet's surface surface was, as best we can determine, very much left intact. The article continues by underlining what Frontier have previously said that the galaxy will never be quite the same again in the aftermath of update 13 and mostly talks about the use of an in-game cutscene for the first time in Elite Dangerous and how Frontier seed the game with mysteries and discoveries for players to uncover to further our knowledge of the wider plot. The PCGN article goes further however. While still underlining that the galaxy has changed and these aren't the Thargoids we've become accustomed to they further add some comments made by Luke Betterton during the conversation saying quote ...the aftermath is really the precursor to something and that thing is not small, not by any stretch of the imagination." Unquote. He goes on further saying that the change that we're now seeing will eventually involve an overhaul to one of the core functions of Elite Dangerous which will be rolling out sometime in 2023. We've known for some time that a key feature of Elite Dangerous was being revisited by the developers in 2023 since it was announced by Frontier back in May but this is the first time we've heard that feature overhaul is somehow linked to the events surrounding the Proteus wave. As the conversation continues Luke makes note that the developers are listening to what players are saying but also watching what they do which is bringing an immediate payoff on the development side. He describes it in terms of an unconventional conversation where the story that is being crafted will drop into our laps having been something that we, the player base, have created, presumably with our attitudes and actions. This was the case in fairly recent history with the demise of Aegis, something that Frontier have admitted was brought about because of players perception and engagement with the now defunct Xeno Research and Defence Agency. In the Rock Paper Shotgun article this week that I mentioned earlier Luke also spoke about the tools that the codebase of 4.0 gives the team allowing them to bring content into Elite Dangerous quicker and we're wondering here if Luke's comments to PCGN are linked to those tools. Allowing the development team to play with the storyline more following up on Frontier's previous promise to ensure that plotlines featured in Galnet will also very much be visible in the game. Whatever the case it appears that the hype train Frontier steered going into update 13 hasn't stopped yet and we're clearly still moving within what is now an evolving galaxy. These are interesting times for Elite Dangerous. Frontier clearly are far from done with the game and seem keen to show that the Odyssey is still very much just beginning. We can't wait to see where the aftermath goes next and what update 14 brings. We started receiving reports yesterday after the regular Thargs Day tick that there had been a change in behaviour from the Thargoids. During a Twitch livestream yesterday following the regular Thargs Day tick Commander Psykit was hyper addicted when jumping between systems near HIP 22460, the site of the Proteus wave event. Upon dropping to normal space Psykit was confronted by three Thargoid interceptors all with their Thargon swarms deployed and all of whom began immediately firing. The ships rapid and unscheduled disassembly was prevented by the remaining 3% of its hull when Psykit finally managed to trigger the frameshift drive and jump away back into hyperspace. She was carrying no Guardian artifacts or Thargoid entrails and the Thargoids initiated no shutdown pulse or scan before the attack began. 
We awoke this morning to find that the new behaviour has now been confirmed by both the AXI and Canon research and appears to be centred around HIP22460 in a 60 light year bubble. The Thargoid hyperdictions outside of that area are, as best we can determine at this point, behaving as normal and are of the usual stop and search variety. It's clearly still very early days in the aftermath of the Proteus event but it certainly seems as though the Thargoids emanating from HIP22460 are specifically behaving differently to what we've become accustomed to. Whether that behaviour is a simple retaliatory reaction to the events surrounding Proteus or the Thargoids themselves in that system have somehow been changed in some regard as a result of Proteus is yet to be determined and we'd be intrigued to hear your theories around what's going on here. Whatever the outcome the best advice we can give as things stand is if you're jumping within 60 light years of HIP22460 either be prepared for a fight or to run immediately if hyperdicted. If you're jumping anywhere else where hyperdictions are common don't assume any hyperdiction is an act of aggression. Again based on the evidence we've seen so far and I'd stress again this is early days still if there is a shutdown field outside of HIP22460 it's likely just a stop and search. Assuming there's no further observed changes or discoveries made in the region between now and Thursday then next weeks Thargs Day tick could possibly bring about a further expansion of the aggressor goids sphere of operations. With that said we are in entirely new territory here. The Thargoids have never come out firing before without a pulse and scan and they've never held on to territory before. We don't even know at this point if the Thargs Day tick even applies to these new hyper aggressive worry weeds so as a general rule of thumb if you're down that way expect the unexpected and report anything you find going forward. Good luck to us all commanders. What do you think has happened to the Thargoid since the Proteus wave? Will you be visiting the planetary collision in the bubble this week? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.